Club members, welcome back. What Another an awesome edition. month of champagnes we have. Now, you've probably heard Kiri and I and our team out in the market talking about Nicolas Fiet. Yep. Um, interesting one to pronounce. We've been plugging it uncontrollably. Nicolas Fiet. Yeah. Um, Nikki Fu for short, if that's more uh, comfortable for you. Yes, that has been. Sensational house. Now, what's interesting is that Nicolas Fiet is the number one selling champagne in France, it is number three globally. Mm -hmm. So we're talking bigger than Moon, bigger than Pomeroy, bigger than Tattinger, bigger than most, bigger than Dom Perignon, but not very well known in Australia. It will be because the wines are amazing. Yeah. When we talk about very the top exciting. five champagnes in the world, you've got Moët et Chandon, Veuve Clicquot, Nicolas Fillette, um, Laurent Perrier, and Pomeroy, I think, yeah. followed by Moon and Tattinger. Yes, yeah, it's about that. Now. That's always shifting. It's actually the youngest of all of these houses. A lot of these houses have been, you been know, pedigree of 1700s, 1800s. Um, Nikki Fu is is really quite new compared to these houses. 1976. Correct. So you know, less than 50 years old. Correct. Yeah. By and my age. Nicolas Fia, as a man, he came from a family of champignons. They were actually Parisian wine merchants, so he did grow up with that wine in his blood. But he was a bon vivant, he was a businessman, and he was actually first successful of importing coffee uh, from Africa into America, so he was a coffee merchant. But of course, you know, he played in the right circles, he had the right connections, he was a very flamboyant man. He was friends with Lady Diana, Princess Diana, he was friends with Martina Natratilova, a lot of famous figures. And when he was in America, he thought there's a real gap in the market for another champagne house. Mm -hmm. And when he came back to France, he partnered with um, Henri, Henri Macquart, Macquart, who's, uh, you know, became his partner. Correct. And, and Henri Macquart already had a cooperative of wine growers. Together, they bought in the Nicolas Fillette name and this is the beginning of the story, which is the ultimate success story. They grew and grew and grew. They are a collective of growers. The growers banded together to produce their own champagne. The label, that beautiful emblem some, that you see on the label is some a- Some 5,000 growers. Yeah. So, you know, like it, 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 like you say, it became like a juggernaut effect where it was like grower after grower after grower wanted to be part, part of, of this, this movement. It was yeah. more of like a, you know, an understanding that they own part of this. It's not just- And they control They it. drop their fruit off and then get something back. It's a very different sort of cooperative um, setup and structure. And I think that's that's actually a unique story in Champagne. Yes, and there's a board and they all have this say, and I think it's amazing. But mm. we have um, something special this month. We've got two Champagnes that have never been in Australia before. They are our favorites when we're in the house in France, and we're bringing them out to you this month. Mm -hmm. So we've given you a bit of history about Nicolas Fiat and his his extraordinary journey as an entrepreneur and you know businessman. Uh, now the the winery has at its headquarters at an incredible visitor center, and, and at the helm, the winemaker uh, Guillaume Raphaël. He came on board in 2014, so he inherited a lot of uh, amazing wines that had already been created by the previous winemaker. But he's taking his modern sort of edge to it. The, 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 the brand has uh, been updated. All the labels have been sort of revised. They've got the beautiful new logo on the front, which represents the entire sort of um, collective, collective of growers. Of growers. Uh, and they've also just merged with another major um, uh, house, which is uh, Champagne. I love that you threw me into that <laughs> one. And I can't remember either, Kiri. It is, oh, come to me in a second. We may even have to. <laughs> We might need to put that in the show notes. Mm. Thank you, Kiri. Uh, Let's focus on Nikki Fu, shall we? I think it's important to talk about what distinguishes a brand, you know, what gives them personality. And it's often the people behind the house, the founders that give them personality. Moët et Chandon has their personality, Mum has its yeah. personality, but Nikki Fu, Nikki Fu is about success, it's about entrepreneurship. And Nikki Fu is really about 
inclusion. It's a champagne that's for everyone. They're not navel gazers. They're not too serious. They don't take themselves too seriously. And they're all about having fun. They're about being uninhibited. They're about joy. They're about pleasure. You know, champagne for anyone at any time. And I love that philosophy. Yep. And I think that's really ref reflective it of where we are modern day, you know, now. Inclusion of all types, of all races, of all colors. And that's what Nikki Fu does as a champagne brand. Absolutely. Actually, uh, hits quite closely to my heart because I've always wanted to make, I've always said this champagne more sort of street level, more open, more relaxed, less Democratization sort of, of champagne. And make not, it, make not it so haughty, everyone haughty. can just jump in, have a glass, and not really think too much about it, like they would buy a bottle of really nice Pinot or whatever it is, and not worry about it. Too but much. can I say that the two champagnes that we've chosen, you want to think about, because they're very, very good. So what's first? What are we going to try? We gonna Can try we the... talk about the Blanc de Blanc? Oh. Hallelujah. Well. This wine is sensational. Okay, so why? Why is it sensational? Okay. Tell, tell the club members. Firstly, you touched on it earlier. The visitor center at Nicolas Fillette in their um, headquarters of Shui is a, an, an amazing experience. It's Possibly like, the best experience in Champagne for seeing the way Champagne is made. You're right in the rolling hills of Shuyi. Magnificent. Over heaps of vineyards. Magnificent. Everywhere you look is amazing. But they also host a gastronomic lunch for us, which is phenomenal. Now, the two wines that stand out to us each year when we go to this lunch, which have never been in Australia before, are the Grand Cru Blanc de Blanc Vintage and the Grand Cru Blanc de Noir Vintage, both of which you're getting this month, and they're bloody epic champagnes, but the Blanc de Blanc for me is sensational. We are looking at a vintage 2011. 2011 was a challenging year. Yes. Super, super, super cold, you know, um, winter, harking back to the ice ages, chilly, 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 frost. Yeah. We lost a lot of our fruit before we even started. Um, through the summer months. We did get some nice ripening at the end. Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier were diluted. They really suffered. We had a lot of mildew. We had a lot of issues in the vineyard, but Cote de Blanc Chardonnay in the limited yield that came out was was excellent. Mickey Mouse. Uh, some of the um, highest rated champagnes were like Comte de Champagne from Tatanger, the 2011 vintage. Yeah, uh, Piri uh, Jouet. Piri Jouet. Uh, Blanc de Blanc. Uh, and some of the lesser known growers yep. as well all did really Egli, well. Egli. But small parcels, if you were controlled in your picking and your pressing, 2011 Blanc de Blanc, 2011 Blanc de Blanc was sensational. Now, we are talking five Grand Cru parcels. Cremant. Cremant. Chouy. Chouy. Auger. Le Manil Sir Auger and Aviz. We are talking the best of the best, ladies and gentlemen. And then a deft winemaker, it's all stainless steel, put it in the cellar for nine years. And what's interesting is that the 2011 was actually released after the 2012 because it needed a little more time. Yep. But my God, is it good. I think with what, what happens with tougher years? or more difficult years is luckily it was saved right towards the end with with you know warm bursts right of sunshine. Bursts of sunshine um what you do get though is a rare example <sighs> you know of something that struggled to get there and finally when you do have it you really want to hold it until it's just at its point of you know allowing it to really express its its true true nature because if you release the wine beforehand might look a little bit clumsy. So 2012 in, in direct relation was quite a warm year. Um, even mm -hmm. though it was really wet at the beginning, mm -hmm. it warmed up right towards the end yeah. and everything got really nice and ripe. So everything was easier to drink up front. Yeah. And so got released earlier. Can I just talk about the notes on this wine because I'm yeah. completely- Go for it. I'm in love with it. I'm, I'm drinking through you vicariously. C classic Hallmark aged Chardonnay, fresh cream, triple brie cheese, beautiful but soft minerality and where it's perfect for me is the way that it presents on the palette you have both width and length and dimension but the thing that's most notable is the persistence of aroma and flavor so I'm talking length once that sip has been completed how many seconds does the memory live on and I'm talking five six seven eight and you've got this sort of um, beautiful combination of passion fruit and citrus and um, crisp, 
classic Chardonnay characteristics on the palate. For me, this champagne is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. um, if I was to give comparisons, you know, Louis Rodera Blanc de Blanc, um, Charles Heidsick Blanc de Blanc, wow. it's in that ballpark. Um, it's such a pleasant, enjoyable experience and, and one of the best Blanc de Blancs I've had in, you in know, a, in a while. You know, one of the things I'm so excited about that it's here is that they go, look, Nicolas Fiat can really produce a astonishing amount of champagne mm. each month. I think it's in the it's a million, million bottles, million bottles. Yeah. and they take August off, so that's only 11 for the one for the year, right? Yeah. Now, um, this is only 20,000 bottles, and I think the Blanc de Noir is slightly less. 20,000, that's tiny. That's almost grower yeah. status in how it's produced and how it's done. So when we got our allocation, I just jumped on it, and I pushed and pushed really hard. And you're getting sure it all. Get it. So we're giving it all to you. First <laughs> time in the country, you're getting spoiled. That's amazing. So because we've talked about the house, we're going to move swiftly on to the Blanc de Noir. Wow, thank you for that lovely summary of the 2011. I can see you're really charged about that. Um, and as you should be, bloody good wine. Taking you now into Pinot Noir country, we are, um, again, five, five Grand, Grand Cruz. We've got Verzi and Verzenay, which is on the northern side of the Montagne de Rhin, the Mount yeah. de Rhin. And then we've got um, the southern, south, uh, southern part, which is Ai, Ombonay, and... Uh, um, Verzenay. No, Ai, Ombonay, and... Boozy. Boozy, And Sorry. what you've got with the, the southern sides, you've got the chalkiness, but you've also got some of that spice and some complexity. Mm -hmm. In the north, it gives you that real freshness and uh, and real dance about it in the palate. Red fruit characters This abound. is, that's right. And this, when you dip your nose in it, it's, it's exactly what you, what you would anticipate from anything Pinot Noir. It's, you know, that raspberry ripple ice cream. It's got that real vibrant uh, chalky mineral dimension on the little palate. bit of spice the white pepper the white pepper it's got it doesn't Ginger. have doesn't have anywhere near the same sort of acid profile as Blanc Blanc or sort of um, vivacity of the Blanc Blanc but it really does have that body venosity and mouth filling structure which I love I'm, I'm all about it's, that. it's warmth in a glass it really is very and different I, dimension and, and I think it really sums up you know uh, that blend of, of Grand Cru's beautifully um, you know the kind of foods that you can play with this are you know like mushroom risotto mm -hmm. or you can have tuna tartare or you can have all sorts of really a pumpkin ravioli pumpkin ravioli whatever you want to play with you can have some really interesting flavors with this it is quite delicate it's, yes it, it is it is not it's not like heavy and you know like with oak for example if you would introduce oak into something like this you'd start to see a bigger bolder palette it's not quite like that it has some some lightness to it its, its body so don't yeah. expect it to be you know, uh, blow you over. And we're talking 2012, great vintage, and it's eight years in the cellar. Yeah. So we've got eight and nine years, respectively. It's time, you know, it's it's the subtlety. You can see that the size of the bubble is very small, so when the wine's aging in the cellar, the protein of the wine is changing. You minimize the attack the longer you spend in the cellar, so you have not only a smaller bubble, but a softer skin on the bubble, so it feels more vinous, more silky, more soft. Um, but it's perfectly balanced. Mm, I love it. You're not getting that overbearing yeast. You're not getting any influence of timber. It's a very delicate wine, but the flavors so articulately presented in both examples, the Blanc de Blanc in its purest form and the Blanc de Noirs in its purest form. It's it's a great way to look at the and, grapes of Chardonnay, and the grapes of Champagne. Totally, and, and just as a note, if you're serving this as sort of an aperitif star and you just want to serve it as a glass, glass to some friends, you know, eight to 10 degrees. If you actually want to serve it up with some food, have it a little bit warmer, you know, 10 to 12 degrees. That just leaves, leave it outside. Which is where um, we're at now. For five minutes, yeah. 10 minutes, and it'll come up to temperature and then you can have some food with it. It'll taste amazing. Well, there you have it. You have an exclusive feature for club members this month. You're looking at the very best from the Champagne House of Nicolas Fillette. Mm -hmm. I was thoroughly impressed with both of those wines. Um, I've got to order some more now. I know. It's, it's all, all gone. Out. It's all for you. Um, so enamored with the quality of these wines. I think it's awesome to see how good champagne can get within a house that big. Yeah. You know, because we, of course, the entry level is their flagship and that's where they spend a lot of their time and energy, but they've got some of the best grapes in champagne. So it's awesome that the winemaker gets to go in and choose five of the best Grand Cru villages from each representation of Pinot and Chardonnay mm. and turn out such an ex a stunning example of vintages in both. Yeah. So as we always say, you know, 
If you really enjoyed the wines or you're, you're opening them or you're some friends, feel free to post on socials, either on you know, our Facebook group, our community group, which is shared between you all, uh, or if you're on Insta, you know, Emperor Champagne Club, hashtag, and that would be awesome. And It'd a little tip hear. from me, I wouldn't share these champagnes. Oh. I know that sounds horrible. It's not fair. No, it's true. But we shared the first bottle with some very dear friends and I love them very much. But when the bottle was empty, we were all a bit, a bit sad. sad. <laughs> That's all right. We've got another bottle right here. So my advice to you when you're drinking champagnes of this magnitude, just you and someone that you love. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this month. We hope you enjoyed the champagnes as much as we do. Um, we will see you around the country very soon because we've got events coming to you. Um, write in with any feedback, hit us up on socials, emperor.champagne, and we hope to see you on the next episode. Kiri, I can't wait to see what you've got for us. Oh, something, something's brewing. <laughs> Until the next time. See ya. Bye. One second. It is... They're right on the river, the Epinay. They've got that beautiful crisscross. Castle now. Castle now. Castle now. Every inch of your face. Mate. Every inch of my face. <laughs> up and down. Up Stop it. And down. What would be the uh, What would be the name of your OnlyFans? Uh, it's your username. Pop. <laughs> K-pop. Greek Village. <laughs> Greek village. Greek village. I don't know. Greek town. Greek town. Come to Greek town. I was, I was thinking like Adonis. Okay. <laughs> Adonis. 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 <laughs> Adonis. Oh, Adonis. I like it. Uh -huh. Greek, yeah, okay, cool. That's better than, <laughs> than Greek town. Yeah, way better. Adonis. Yeah. Adonis. You can keep that one. What about Top Johnson? I'm thinking Adonis. Adonis. I'm thinking, I think that's <laughs> the, the name. In fact, I'll set up the profile. <laughs> Are you gonna film him? I got this, mate. I'm gonna be in it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, You'll be my stunt double. You can be my stunt double. for the price We're of one. Brown. It's okay. Stunt double, it is. <laughs> Have you got an adongus though? You know. Yeah, that's Kiri, uh, what's a dongus's like on-screen voice like? <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got. I got the character in voice. Yeah, I got the you character. Got it? Yeah. Go. Hit me. Hey guys. This is a dengus. <laughs> a dongus. A dongus. A, de a dengus sounds like a, a, an a illness dingus. you'd get by getting bit by a mosquito. Stop talking character. about your dongus and get focused on the champagne. I think everybody who pays a subscription wants to hear about a dongus. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is not Kiri's OnlyFans account. People are paying money for the wines. Okay, cool. Well, you tell me. Put it in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> Do not. Who's bringing us in? Hmm. It'll be cute. <laughs> and Dongus is going to bring us in. This is his tone. This is how we'll be talking. Pretty low and deep. Pretty relaxed. Casual. You coming over? <laughs> <laughs>